so how but how to quantify or assess the amount of one way is to ask questions regarding how many sanitary pads the person is using per day so many a times you will get generally a person changes three to four pads per day but it is important to note if the pad is getting soaked properly or they are just changing it frequently for the hygiene purpose and the pad is only one fourth or half soaked so that will help us to quantify how much actually she is bleeding not just the number of pad blood clot is normal because it is the shedding of the endometrial tissue which is not like a free flowing blood is appreciated by patient as blood clots but we cannot ignore the uh, amount of uh, clots which is which is passing and the size of it so while taking the history of a patient it is very important to in instigate regarding the amount of clot or the uh, approximate size they can either use any like uh, vegetable size to tell or just by quantification in the size also the hand gestures they can tell us regarding the size of the clot symptoms of anemia because heavy bleeding often obviously will lead to anemia sometimes it is also very subjective and it depends on the first 26% of the females who have normal menstrual loss will consider their period as heavy while 40% of the patient who will have heavy periods will consider it as moderate or light so we should not go on the subjective experience of the patient but should also try to objectify what is the exact amount of the bleeding why does excessive bleeding happen so the volume of blood loss at menstrual menstruation is controlled by local uterine vascular tone the hemostasis and regeneration of endometrium often there is a disbalance in the uh, levels of prostaglandin the vasodilator prostaglandin e is often seen to be at a higher concentration than other uh, prostaglandins such as pgi2 and pg2 alpha there is also a increased endometrial fibrinolysis Uh, which may be of importance however these are all cellular things which are going on during the period um, during the menses so going to the history how what should we ask the patient the symptoms of anemia if they are getting easy fatigability weakness lethargy symptoms of thyroid disease is are they experiencing or uh, like uh, uh, the in even in hot weather they are not feeling very hot the body is getting swelling so these all things we have to ask clotting disorder clotting disorder there is if they have a known clotting disorder then we will get a history if not we have to ask since when they are experiencing the heavy menstrual period if it is starting even at the start of their period menses that is at menarche then we should suspect that there might be some clotting disorder going on or if they have a family history of any a uh, bleeding disorder along with all those uh, history we have to ask regarding other comorbidities if they are on any long term medication if they are trying for conception or they are having a complete family these things will help us to determine what should be the treatment provided for their condition routine obstetric history should be taken how many previous surgeries they have underwent how many lscs they have underwent if they are using any medication for the contraception like intrauterine uh, contraceptive device past medical history of you know, vas uh, venous thromboembolic events asthma peptic ulcers all these are small minor uh, these are the uh, points which will help us to uh, provide the patient with a, a con- comprehensive uh, specific um, treatment drug history of warfarin ecosporin family history of any malignancy it can be either gynecological malignancy or colorectal malignancy examination will be the basic how we go about in any patient starting with pallor pallor will tell us whether there is signs of iron deficiency the neck examination if there any presence of goiter or thyroid disorder abdominal palpation will plays a role in identification of any pelvic mass or if there is any tenderness speculum examination is important 
to identify a cervical pathology or if there is any endometrial polyp, huge endometrial polyps coming out of the cervical os. A biomanageable examination to assess the uterine size or presence of any adnexal mass. Investigating uh, the patient, CBC is most important. It will tell us about uh, the blood levels of the patient, how much is her hemoglobin, is she anemic or not. Platelet uh, count will be low if the patient is having any platelet dysfunction. Thyroid function tell us, uh, thyroid function will tell us about her thyroid status. Clotting uh, studies is not uh, recommended for all the patients. But if they give history of menorrhagia since menarche or past medical history or family history suggesting clotting dysfunction, then we should do clotting studies. Transabdominal ultrasound or transvaginal ultrasound, endometrial biopsy and hysteroscopy. Now, these things, how they will help us in managing menorrhagia, we'll just go through one by one. The first line of investigation other than the blood works is ultrasonography. It is easily available and it will help us to identify any structural abnormalities which is present. It, it is very helpful in identifying fibroids, adenomyosis, endometrial or cervical polyp and if there is any hyperplasia, not exactly hyperplasia, but the endometrium thickness can be identified in ultrasonography. Transvaginal ultrasonography is always preferred over transabdominal ultrasound, um, but uh, as in India, in our, we cannot use transvaginal ultrasound if the patient is not married or not sexually active. Endometrial biopsy, if the patient is not responding to the medical management or there is persistent intermenstrual bleeding or the ultrasound is showing thick and EP or there is any uh, difference in the echogenic, difference from a normal echogenicity of endometrium, we should do an endometrial biopsy to exclude endometrial CA or atypical hyperplasia of endometrium. The hysteroscopy is a very upcoming mode modality of diagnosing any endometrial or cavitary lesions. Uh, whenever ultrasound is inconclusive, uh, nowadays office hysteroscopy is considered where patient is not under anesthesia and a small caliber hysteroscope is directly introduced inside the uterine cavity to identify any pathology in the cavity which is causing the uh, bleed.